Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. I have a bit of a book haul for you today. I have recently gone to two different library book sales and I have my book of the month books and just some other books that I've kind of gathered over the last couple of weeks. And so let's just jump right in and let me share with you all the new books going onto my shelves this November. I am doing something a little different today. I did sort these by genre. Normally I sort them by where I got them, but I couldn't remember all of the places I got these. And so most of them are sorted by genre, except for these first four. I'm going to do my two book of the month that I got this month and then two that I purchased on Amazon using credits. So thank you for those of you who use my links down below. I try to put links for most of the books I talk about and if you click on that link and shop for anything within the next few minutes I get a, a small commission from that and I do now have an Amazon shop or storefront as well that is going to be linked down below. Feel free to check that out. Obviously no pressure to buy anything but if you do I get a tiny little kickback from that and so with some of that money I purchased the next book in the Bear Town series. This is the final one, The Winners. It's chunky. I was waiting for it to come out on paperback because I have the other ones in paperback as well. This is the final book in the series that starts with Bear Town and then Us Against You and then The Winners. This is the third one. So I'm really excited to finish this series but I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but I'm so glad that I found it on paperback on Amazon. And then Amanda from On the Middle Shelf has highly recommended this book, The Moon Garden by Michelle A. Berry. It has a gorgeous cover, and I believe it's a sci-fi secret garden retelling, middle grade. I'm just really excited about that. And then there's a next one, Sea Garden or see something that's coming out or is already out as well that I would like to get. So I purchased those two on Amazon. And then in my book of the month box this month, I picked up two of my anticipated reads. I always feel like I win when book of the month also picks books that I'm anticipating. So again and again is kind of a contemporary by Jonathan Evison. It's about this older man, a lonely old man clinging to his delusions and rehearsing his fantasies or a legitimate anomaly, a thousand year old man who continues to search for the love he lost so long ago. So there's this older man telling these stories to a nurse, I believe, and it's unknown whether he's just this really old man, like this sci-fi kind of situation, or does he is he just trapped in his illusions of his life and he's searching for his long lost love, I believe. So I think that sounds very interesting. And I was glad to find it on Book of the Month. And then also a YA fantasy, What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. 19th century Buenos Aires. <laughs> Buenos Aires in Argentina. So we follow a Bolivian Argentinian girl, Inez Oliveira, who is part of the upper society, upper crust. Like the rest of the world, the town is steeped in old world magic that's been largely left behind or forgotten. But then at some point, her parents, who are kind of globetrotters and often leaving her behind, they die. She learns of their death and they have left her a huge inheritance as well as a mysterious guardian, an archaeologist. So she is going to sail to Egypt and try to figure out what happened to her parents. So it's going to have some ancient Egyptian stuff in here. I'm just, I just think that this sounds really cool, very different. And I'm interested. I'm very interested in that one. Obviously, that's why I picked it. I only have one fantasy, I believe, that's not middle grade, but The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry by C.M. Wagoner. I'm not sure if this is a sequel but this was part of a library book sale and so it wasn't very expensive. We follow Delaria, a petty con artist, occasional thief, and partly educated fire witch. Then she sees the wanted sign seeking female persons of mar martial or magical ability to guard a lady of some importance. I, I feel like this is going to be a fun fantasy type of a read. Kind of like a Regency romance but throw in witches and fantasy. So I'm interested. I have three Christian nonfiction books here. I, I picked up these. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep these for myself or use them as part of gifts. 30 Days of Prayer by David Jeremiah just has just different topics and then scriptures for different topics, a prayer for worship, a prayer for comfort, encouragement, promise, and verses to go along with them. I just think that that would be a cool little resource as well as this God's promises for when you are hurting. This might be nice to save to give to somebody who might need something like this. It's in perfect condition. So I'm pleased that I found those at the library book sale. And then Anxious for Nothing by Max Lucado. I used to love Max Lucado way back in the day. It's been quite a while since I've read anything by him. But this is just finding the 
the tagline says finding calm in a chaotic world. So I thought I would add that to my nonfiction Christian shelf. Let's go ahead and do these contemporary slash romance books. I picked up one Christmassy one, The Perfect Christmas by Debbie Maycomer. This one has two different holiday stories in it, which I love at Christmas time, kind of a shorter novella type read. I believe this in this one, we're gonna deal with a matchmaker and two different women who use this matchmaker services, something along those lines. I was here for that. <laughs> then another romance one that I have is The Four I Do by Sophie Cousins. I actually am, when I looked at this a little bit more, I'm not sure I want this one because it's about this woman who's about to get married and her first love shows up or something that like the one who got away shows up right before her wedding. And so is she going to do like one last little fling with this guy or not? I'm not sure, but I had picked it up. So I'll put it in here. We'll see if it'll stay on my shelves. I had this Kristen Harmel on my want to read list, The Sweetness of Forgetting. I really have liked her historical fiction. This one feels more contemporary. We're going to follow a 36 year old named Hope who lost her mother to cancer. Her husband left her for a younger woman. Her bank account is almost gone, empty. Her own dreams of becoming a lawyer long gone. She's now running a failing family bakery on Cape Cod and raising a troubled preteen. So just a contemporary single mom story. Um, but I am interested in trying one of Kristen Harmel's more contemporary books rather than a historical fiction. We'll see. I know I got this one from a little free library, The Invincible Husband of Frick Island by Colleen Oakley. I think this is about a woman whose husband passes away, but she is convinced he's still alive and she still talks to him and everyone on, else on the island plays along with her. But that doesn't really help her process her grief or move on eventually. So I'm curious how, where that one's going to go. And then this is a super new release, Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang, the author of Babel, which I have not read and not sure that I'm going to. And honestly, I don't really know anything about this. I just picked it up in my fill a bag for 10 bucks library sale. We'll do a try a chapter maybe with some of these that I'm not as familiar with. White Lies, Dark Humor, Deadly Consequences. Best-selling sensation Juniper Song is not who she says she is. She didn't write the book she claims she wrote, and she is most certainly not Asian American in this chilling and hilariously cutting novel from the author of um, Babel. I have to look up some more reviews and a little bit more about that one. Um, but since that kind of lends itself towards mystery thriller, that's my biggest stack. I think most of these are more mystery than thriller but I did pick up The Amazing Mrs. Polifax. I was so excited to find this at my library book sale. I heard about it first from Chantel. Chantel reads all day and this is book two in the series so I do need to find book one possibly from the library or something but I just was excited to get Mrs. Polifax. It's about an older woman who's always dreamed of becoming a part of the CIA and then through maybe a comedy of errors or something she does <laughs> and so that continues her story. This one just looked interesting to me and it's blurbed by Louise Penny. So I picked up A Murder of Magpies by Judith Flanders. Simply a cover purchase. <laughs> a Murder of Magpies takes readers on a whirlwind tour of London and Paris with an unforgettably original new heroine. Fun. It's very dirty and there's like these marks on the back. I need to take some cleaner and try to clean that one up a bit. I grabbed two Agatha Christie over the last couple weeks. I think both of these I might have found in Little Free Libraries. So I have this copy of Death on the Nile, which I'm not sure if I already own or not, but I, I couldn't leave it there. And then at Bertram's Hotel as well. I think this one is a Hercule Poirot, Death on the Nile, and this one is a Miss Marple. But excited to find those. I picked up the sequel. I just recently talked about the first one, the Death of Mr. Wickham or something like that. And then this is The Late Mrs. Willoughby by Claudia Gray. This is the sequel murder mystery based on Jane Austen characters. Should be fun. If I like the first one at all, I have the second one ready to go. I feel like this one is more thrillery. The Overnight Guest by Heather Gutenkopf. I have read books by her before. She's kind of like a Jodi Picot writing about current events or current topics in the world that make you think about things in a little bit different way maybe than your original or snap judgments. Um, but this one does look a little more thrillery. <laughs> a woman receives an unexpected visitor during a deadly snowstorm in this chilling thriller from Heather Gutenkopf. She thought she was alone and it's about a true crime writer. So of course that's going to be a little, a little bit creepy. And then we have The Plot by Jean Hanf Korlitz. And I think I've heard a lot about this one. If I'm 
Right. Um, in this one, I believe we follow a professor who has a student with a fantastic book idea. And then something happens to the student, the student dies or something, and the professor steals his idea to use as his own. I believe that's the gist of that one. And then, of course, I picked up another Anthony Horowitz. What? I need to stop. I have quite a few and I haven't read any yet. This is Moonflower Murders. And they're so chunky. I'm going to take off this plastic binding. But I believe this is a part of a series. I'm not sure where this is in the series. Uh, this features his famous literary detective Atticus Pund and Susan Ryland, who's the hero of the Magpie Murders, a brilliantly complex mystery with echoes of Agatha Christie. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> I'm very, very interested in trying out some Anthony Horowitz. Very interested. Let's go ahead and do these middle grade. I don't have too many, just five. Christopher Paul Curtis is an author that I've read and loved. He has a Newbery winner, Bud Not Buddy. I had never heard of this one, The Madman of Piney Woods. And this is a companion to Elijah of Buxton, which I own, but haven't, not, haven't yet read. I have two books by Alan Gratz. He is an author that I have read and loved. He, my favorite is probably Refugee, but I also loved Ban This Book, which is more contemporary. These are both historical. The first one is about Ground Zero. And then Grenade, which I believe is a World War II story. We follow a young American Marine and also a Japanese boy who lives in Okinawa. So should be very interesting. And I have liked Alan Gratz in the past. So I'm, so I'm pretty convinced I will like these ones as well. I got Steelheart, which is the first in a Brandon Sanderson, I think YA series. This might not be middle grade. This might be YA, The Reckoners book one. How far would you go for revenge if someone killed your father, if someone destroyed your city, if everything you ever loved was taken from you? David Charleston will go to any lengths to stop Steelheart, but to exact revenge in Steelheart's world, David will need the Reckoners, a shadowy group of rebels bent on ma maintaining justice. And it turns out that the Reckoners might just need David too. Fun. I have loved Brandon Sanderson. I'm pretty hopeful that I will enjoy that one as well. And then I got picked up this middle grade that I know nothing about and I've never seen or heard of, The Wonderling by Mira Bartok. I think it's so pretty. I, again, have to take off this plastic library binding, but I think this is going to have animal characters. Miss Carbuncle's Home for Wayward and Misbegotten Creatures. Have you been unexpectedly burdened by a recently orphaned or unclaimed creature? Worry not. We have just the solution for you. That's what it says on the back. Interesting. Welcome to the home for wayward and misbegotten creatures run by the evil Miss Carbuncle, a cunning villainess with a cold, impenetrable heart who believes her terrified young charges exist only to serve and to suffer. Ooh, that sounds a little bit dark. I'm <laughs> curious. I'm curious about that. And then the final stack that I have is five historical fiction. So let me just tell you about these ones. So I did pick up a Another book of the month, Peach Blossom Spring by Melissa Fu. This one takes place in 1938 in China. So just before World War II, but in China. And I've not heard very much about this. Debut novel about war, migration, and the power of telling our stories. Follows three generations of Chinese family on their search for a place to call home. That sounds so good to me. And then another war novel that's another little bit of a different twist is The Swiss Nurse by Mar Mario Escobar. I've heard of that name. I have another book, I think, by him on my shelves. This one is based on the true story of an astonishingly brave woman who saved hundreds of mothers and their children during the Spanish Civil War and World War II. So it's about Elizabeth Eidenbenz, who left Switzerland in 1937 to aid children orphaned during the Spanish Civil War. Amazing. I'm here for that. Twain's End by Lynn Cullen. This one takes place in 1909. And we're going to follow Mark Twain. And he gave his blessing to his secretary to get married to this guy. And then a month later wrote this five, almost 500 page scathing, what is it called? Rant about the pair. And then along with his daughter slandered this secretary in the newspaper and totally drugged her through the mud. And this is just about what, what really was going on between Mark Twain and his secretary. Why did he give his blessing for them to get married and then turn on them just a month later? I don't know what happened, but I'm curious. And then I do have a Chris Bajalian, The Sandcastle Girls. I only own Midwives by him. I think I had unhauled 
some other ones but this one just sounds really good because it deals with Syria and I am very curious to read anything that takes place in Syria or the Middle East so when Elizabeth, a wealthy young American, arrives in Aleppo, Syria, she has a diploma from Mount Holyoke, a crash course in nursing, and only the most basic grasp of the Armenian language. It's 1915, and she has volunteered to help deliver food and medical aid to refugees of the Armenian genocide during the First World War. And there she meets this young Armenian engineer who has lost his wife and infant daughter, and the two fall in love. So it's going to be a love story about an American almost nurse who had to move to Syria, who moved to Syria to help out with humanitarian aid. I think that sounds fantastic. So I'm thrilled to have that one as well. And then finally, I just have a puzzle. At the one library, you could pick a puzzle for free with any purchase. So I grabbed this one, 4th of July-ish, kind of a parade going on, old timey 4th of July parade. And that is it. That is my relatively big book haul for the month of November. I would love to hear from you if you've read any of these. What did you think about them? Which ones should I move to the top of priority list? Are there any that I mentioned that you're like, probably not the best one for you, Krista? Let me know that as well. I would love to chat with you about these books or anything else in the comments that you want to talk about. I always love talking with you down there. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to talking with you in another video very soon. Bye!